I, I'm Brian Brazel, obviously enough. Uh, and as I said, we're going to look at, at Prometheus, which was, came here from Berlin. So I am one of the four core developers of Prometheus, oddly the one who isn't from Berlin. So I'm from Dublin. I've founded a company called Robust Perception. We're doing the support and consulting thing with Prometheus. I've worked on many open source projects, and I did my time in the Google Ad Mines as well. Uh, so to give the actual history, uh, of uh, Prometheus. It was started off by Matt Proud, who was an ex-Googler at the time, he's now Googled again, and Julius, uh, and they were working at SoundCloud at the time, and in, tw in 2012 it started. And then in 2013, it was developed more within SoundCloud, it was expanded to support Bazooka, which is kind of like, uh, I think it was roughly a Heroku, it's still around, and as well, developing further, starting to get the Go, Java, and Ruby clients going. But we're still talking something that's just inside SoundCloud in Berlin. In 2014, other companies start using it. So myself, I was working in an Irish startup called Boxever, and Johannes Fish in Docker as well was using it. The project matured a lot. We got a new storage engine, uh, much more efficient. Uh, got a new text format, which we still have. And then in 2015, we publicly release, because the project was always on GitHub, but we, it just was spreading by word of mouth, and we were worried that someone else would post it to Hacker News first. What actually happened is we posted it to the Hacker News, like after getting like, things like documentation in place, and nothing happened. Two weeks later, some person we never heard of posted it to Hacker News. I woke up like half eight in the morning. Why are we number 16 on Hacker News? <laughs> That's how it goes, unfortunately. Um, and the adoption increased quite a lot. And then in 2016, uh, as well, we joined the CNCF uh, as we continued to grow quite a bit. Because the thing is, we've gone from a project which started in one company with two people to a project with over 300 contributors just in the core. And there are also, I think we're up to about 150 third-party integrations. We aren't actually sure how many there are. Uh, there's at least 137, because that's how many port numbers are allocated, at least when I checked this morning. This mailing list, IRC, everything is getting good. We, we estimate there's over 500 companies using Prometheus in production. Because no one company is behind Prometheus, we can't actually count. There's no ex explicit products. But we estimate over 500 using it really in production. It might be as many as 1,000. We also have signed of many, many companies wanting to fund development in Prometheus. You've got CoreOS, you've got Weaveworks, you've got GitLab, my own company, Rust Perception, SoundCloud, and lots of other contributors and other companies. So this is a nice, healthy ecosystem showing that how, in the space of five years, you can build a really strong project used by many people. So the question then of what Prometheus is itself, because we've all heard the open source story before. So Prometheus is a metrics monitoring system. So looking at metrics, not logs. So complementary to things like FluentD or the Elk stack. It's a time series database, a query language. We have client libraries, an ecosystem. And the thing is important that we have a cloud native approach to monitoring services, because you need a different focus for things in the cloud. In terms of architecture, we can talk out to Kubernetes, find out where all your pods are. Uh, scrape those, then scrape things like C-Advisor, Cassandra, MySQL, your batch jobs, pull that in, store it very efficiently locally, runs rules and alerts, send us out to the alert manager, page your duty, ops genie, whatever you're using, and view your graphs in the open source Grafana. In terms of philosophy, if you look at things 10, 20 years ago, things were all manually managed. And then we started moving to things like Chef and Puppet. And now we're in a new era again with Kubernetes, and there's been a paradigm shift. But a lot of monitoring is still stuck in the old days. Like, how many of you had someone said, we need an alert when a pod dies? Why would you want the last alert? If a new one's created, life moves on. What you actually want to care about is, my users can't see their cat videos. Like, that's a really important alert. Load averages high is not an important alert, right? Because unless it's actually impacting users, why would you be calling and waking up a high-paid engineer in the middle of the night to say, load average is high? It's like, yes, this number is higher than this number, but the cat videos are OK. That, so we kind of have to have a change in view as to how we perceive these things. That's the sort of thing you need to look at. So in terms of getting data, uh, so Prometheus supports many service discoveries. One of the popular ones is for Kubernetes. So we can discover everything Kubernetes knows about. And all your labels and annotations, we can pull them in because Prometheus and Kubernetes have a similar data model in that regard. They both have arbitrary key value pairs you can do with things. And then you can map those into Prometheus labels. So whatever system, whatever paradigm you have decided for, for your Kubernetes labels and your Kubernetes annotations, you can map that into what makes sense 
not even just for your organization, but for your team, because it turns out everyone has different opinions on how to name things. And Prometheus will automatically pick those, up those changes. Then inside your applications, we have multiple client libraries, like Go, Java, Python, and Ruby are the official ones. There's another 10. Like All the main programming languages are covered. And if someone else is instrumenting their library, you get that sort of for free. Now, obviously, not everyone is instrumenting directly with Prometheus client libraries. This is unfortunate. But hopefully, that will improve over time. Uh, because they are not specific to Prometheus, you can get them to talk about the graphite or anything else as well. We're completely open. But there's also many exporters for all the standard stuff. C Advisor for all your uh, container, Docker, Rocket stats are there. MySQL, SNMP, JMX for all your fun Java applications. And of course, Minecraft and Factorio. <laughs> yep. Uh, yes. It's key. Now, the Factorio one was a bit of fun, but the Minecraft one is actually a friend of mine in Dublin uh, because he wanted to know basically how many ticks per second were going on his server because he really likes to put lots of mods in. So this stuff has real world, fake world applications. <laughs> uh, as well, like uh, Prometheus is also well supported and well part of the cloud native ecosystem. So Kubernetes, as I said, we can pull data from Kubernetes for service discovery. And Kubernetes itself is also instrumented directly with our client libraries, so that all works. Linkerd has metrics in our format. And for gRPC and FluentD, there's the integrations as well. Now, new projects being added since you know, I wrote my slides well in advance two months ago means I now need to update a bit. Uh, Core DNS directly exposes Prometheus metrics. Docker itself also is instrumented with Prometheus. I'm not sure about that. And Rocket doesn't have anything. Let's talk to them. <laughs> uh, as well then, so you have all this data coming from all these systems, whether it be cloud native, whether it be older stuff with JMX or SNMP data. And the PromQL query language is a Turing complete language that lets you do basically anything you want. If you don't believe me, go to Google and search the words Conway's Life Prometheus. Uh, and aside from the silly examples, you, if you want to calculate what whether a disk will fill in four hours, rather than when it'll hit that 5% full on you know, that 2T drive, and then take two years to actually fill, you can do that. If you want to get 95% latency across an entire data center, you can do that. Whatever you can represent mathematically, you can put in PromQL, so you're not limited to, to alerting on things like load average. So you can actually alert on, well, the cat videos are fine, but the dog videos aren't. So I know there's a religious split there. And an important thing as well is you can graph on it, you can alert on it. There is no distinction in Prometheus. So you can have better alerts that don't wake up your engineers in the middle of the night so we can focus on solving real problems and improving open source further rather than having to deal with sleep deficit. So here's one example. And this is a more complicated example of what you normally have. And this is a stat from C Advisor called Container CPU Usage Seconds Total. I just pull all the, the Docker uh, stats for how much CPU each container is using. But then we're going to aggregate it up and sum it up by image. So this isn't by data center, this isn't by region, this isn't by application or anything else normal. This is a cross-cutting look at all the Docker images that are there and seeing how much CPU there is being used. And give me the last, the top five. So this could tell you, hey, these Docker images are using the most CPU. Maybe we should add some optimization flags on those to save a little bit of power. But this is an example, just a small example of the analytics you can do beyond just doing simple alerting and graphing. Uh, because as well, once you have your alerts, you want a principle that not every alert results in a page. If you can think, if we go back to the older world, if you have a rack and the rack fails, you don't need 40 alerts for every single machine. You know what should be handy? One alert per rack. Or one alert per data center saying, hey, here's the racks you need to go poke and fix. And you can apply that principle in the same way. So our alert manager has grouping. So alerts that are coming from the same data center, the same rack, or whatever makes sense to you, you can group them together to a single notification, choose which team they're going to, and throttle those notifications. So if it picks up only half the machines in one cycle and half in the other, you're only going to get two notifications, or maybe even just one, which is getting closer to that ideal of one actual page per incident. And if you want to send them to your ticketing system, you can do that as well. And this is also being designed to work in the real world, because we know things like availability zones fail, especially US East 1. And uh, <laughs> you, know, you need to be reliable. So it's designed that Alert Manager, it's using an AP uh, way of working. So even if it's not network partition, both of those Alert Managers will be trying as hard as they can to send you alerts. So you might end up with twice the notifications on your pager, but at least you notice something going wrong. 
So as I've shown you, Prometheus, it's a metrics monitoring system. We don't care about individual events. We're looking at the system as a whole. It's a time series database storing all this data locally so you can access it reliably even when everything else is going apart. And the query language gets you that in. Client libraries to let you get the data in in an ecosystem of at least 150 different integrations to do that data. And we're, this all combines to allow you to monitor your cloud native applications in a same fashion. Now, on top of this, this isn't just uh, Kubernetes and the other projects uh, today. There's also actually a Prometheus track uh, that is on today and tomorrow in A06, just a few talks that might be of interest. Uh, I own, the first one is my own, which is actually at 12 o'clock. Apparently, the schedule changed in the last two months. Uh, if you're looking on the internal details of how all the different monitoring and instrumentation systems deal with the simple question of, how many requests did I get in the last five minutes? So that, yes, a 45 minutes talk on counting. So if you're deep into monitoring, this one's for you. Now, if the top talk about Prometheus I would recommend here is Fabian's talk on alerting in the cloud native environments, looking further on what is the best way to have alerts that are actually actionable by an engineer and worth waking up someone for, and how you can approach those using PromptQ and Prometheus. So that's the one to look at. Uh, then David is talking about Grafana and is because Grafana is not always enough to have, do it, so how you can integrate with our APIs to do things beyond that. Tomorrow, there's a few. There we go. So Julius, in the morning, if you ever wanted to know about long-term storage in Prometheus and how we make them talk to each other, this is a long-requested feature. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the companies we've worked has, is starting to develop a cloud service based on this. Uh, he's talking about how that's been built up and how it's been used, because this is a long, long-requested. Uh, Alejandro, uh, so not everyone is cloud-native, unfortunately. Some people still have to deal with things like switches and NetApps and you know, other hardware like that. So he's going to talk about SNMP and logs and how to integrate with hardware like that that isn't Kubernetes, because how would you run a switch on Kubernetes? It wouldn't really work. Uh, Bjorn, who's one of the other core developers as well, is going to talk about configuring Prometheus for high performance. So we've actually got some nice changes in the next release as well, 1.6, where our memory usage is going to go down by, I think, 20 30% or something like that. Uh, by tuning some Go parameters. So Prometheus is going, uh, going to give a nice dig deep dive as well. And finally, not in A06 and C04, but registration required, uh, Alexandru and Frederick from CoreOS have a workshop, a two-hour workshop, that will take you from instrumenting your applications to using the CoreOS Prometheus operator to seeing that data inside Prometheus and Grafana end-to-end -end, all together on Kubernetes. So if you want to actually try out Prometheus, this is the workshop to go to. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Also, links. Oh.